South Korea has decided to compensate Korean victims of Japan's wartime forced labor through a government-backed domestic fund, but Seoul leaves the door open for Japan's voluntary participation. The UN administration plans to revise the 52-hour work week, granting more flexibility in working hours and breaks. China projects a modest growth rate of around 5 percent for this year. This came out during an annual Congress where President Xi Jinping's unprecedented third term will be formalized. Good afternoon. Our top story this Monday. The South Korean government has officially announced how it will settle the issue of compensating Korean victims of Japan's wartime forced labor. The victims will be compensated through a third party, a foundation under South Korea's Interior Ministry. For more, we connect live to our Han Sung Woo on the line. So, Sung Woo, how will the victims be compensated exactly? Kyung-un, South Korea's foreign minister, Park Jin, has just announced that the Yoon Song-yeol administration plans to compensate Korean victims of Japan's forced labor during World War II through donations procured by a third party, the Foundation for Victims of Forced Mobilization by Imperial Japan. This comes over four years after the Korean Supreme Court ordered two Japanese companies, Nippon Steel and Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, to individually compensate the victims in landmark rulings. Despite repeated requests over the years, Japan has reportedly refused to make reparations to individuals, insisting all matters were settled under the 1965 treaty that normalized bilateral ties. So local Korean businesses that were beneficiary, beneficiaries of the 1965 treaty will likely be contributing instead. It has been said, though, that Seoul has left the door open for Japanese corporations to take part in the future. The government solution is expected to be met with protests from the victims who have already organized demonstrations for the afternoon. They've been accusing the government of exempting Japan from its responsibilities. Seoul's latest efforts come amid the Yoon Song yeol administration's push to mend relations with Japan with what it's called a more future-oriented approach. Minister Park's announcement comes amid the possibility of a summit between Yoon and Gishida later this month. Sources say South Korea and Japan have also tentatively agreed to create a future youth fund jointly formed by the Federation of Korean Industries and the, Je and the Japan Business Federation to sponsor scholarships for students as part of a bigger bilateral deal on settling the compensation issue. That's all I have for now, Kyung-un. Back to you. Thank you, Sung-woo, for that. Now, South Korea's National Security Advisor Kim Sung Han is in Washington to discuss details of a potential visit to the U.S. by President Yoon Sung Yeol, as well as pending issues regarding the semiconductor supply chain. Speaking to reporters on Sunday, Kim said he will discuss the U.S. Chips Act, which pundits say will negatively impact South Korean chip makers. During his five day visit, he is set to meet with his U.S. counterpart and discuss substantial ways to strengthen the South Korea U.S alliance, including ways to counter increasing threats from North Korea. He also noted that Washington is closely following the issue of compensating Korean victims of Japan's wartime forced labor, and that a new era of Seoul and Tokyo ties will upgrade the trilateral security cooperation. The South Korean government is planning to revise the current 52-hour-per-week work system. The revisions aim to guarantee more flexibility in working hours and breaks to align with global standards. Our Lee Soo-jin has the details. The South Korean government is aiming to enhance the quality of life for workers and help businesses grow by making changes to the current work system. Finance Minister Chu kyung ho led an emergency meeting on Monday to address the revisions. We will focus on making related laws and systems more flexible so that employees can concentrate better when they are working and can rest and use their vacation days more freely as long as there is an agreement between the employee and the management. The government is making changes to the overtime work system which many have criticized due to a labor shortage suffered by smaller firms. 
Under the current rules, the maximum number of working hours is 52 hours per week, including 40 regular hours, with a maximum of 12 overtime hours per week. However, under the proposal, the 52-hour limit would no longer be counted on a weekly basis, with the limit to be calculated on a monthly, quarterly, half-yearly or yearly basis. The nation's selective working hour system could also see changes. Currently, employees at companies where the system is in place can decide the start and end times of their workday along with the number of hours they work each day as long as they do not exceed the 52 hours per week limit for a period of one month. The government wants to extend that period from one month to three months to allow for more flexibility. And the plans include further efforts to ensure that workers get enough rest time, with workers able to exchange overtime hours worked for paid leave. The government intends to create a new working hour paradigm that guarantees choice, health and rest in order to meet global standards. The revisions will be submitted to the National Assembly for approval between June and July. Lee Soo-jin, Arirang News. Prices in South Korea are showing signs of cooling, with consumer price increases last month slowing down. However, public utility fees like those for electricity and gas skyrocketed to an all-time high. Lee dae has more. Consumer price increases showed signs of slowing in February. Statistics Korea said on Monday that the consumer price index, a key gauge of inflation, jumped 4.8 percent on year last month. It's the first time in 10 months that the figure below 5 percent has been reported. Increases peaked last July, but have started to see a downward trend since then. This month's deceleration was mainly due to a price drop in petroleum products and livestock goods. Prices of petroleum products dropped 1.1 percent compared to the previous year, marking the first time in two years that an on-year decrease has been seen. Prices of livestock goods slipped 2 percent, the first time in more than three years that an on-year drop has been recorded. Meanwhile, processed food prices jumped 10.4 percent, the highest increase since April 2009. Prices of services, including dining out, jumped 5.7 percent on year, the pace slowing down compared to January. However, public utility costs for electricity, gas and water continued to soar last month. These three utility prices soared 28.4 percent on year, an all-time high figure since the relevant data was first compiled. Statistics Korea says with the water rates increasing in some cities and provinces, the overall utility price increase rose from the previous month. The official also says, despite the slower pace of inflation, the chance of some difficulties later this year remains. As the government forecasted earlier, we expect some challenges in the second half of this year. Sluggish consumption may be one factor, while uncertainties regarding global commodity prices may arise due to China's reopening. Meanwhile, according to Finance Minister Chu kyung ho at a ministerial meeting on Monday, the government is aiming to stabilize the cost of utilities. The freezing of utility costs in the first half of 2023 had already been announced by the government. The Bank of Korea also held a meeting regarding consumer price rises on the same day. A central bank official says consumer prices will see much smaller increases in March, as oil prices were too high for the same period last year. The figure is expected to remain above the government's goal of 2 percent. Lee Dae-hyun, Arirang News. South Korea's household debt has surged in recent years and it is higher than other OECD countries with relevant data. The Korea Economic Research Institute estimated that the country's household debt from the year 2017 to 2022 surged by nearly 32 percent, reaching almost 2.3 trillion U.S. dollars. This includes the amount of Jeonsei deposit, which is not included in the international statistics. Jeonsei is a unique Korean system where the tenant gives the landlord a huge lump sum deposit instead of paying monthly rent. As of 2021, South Korea's house debt to GDP ratio was 105.8 percent, ranking fourth among 31 OECD countries. But once the Jeonsei deposit system is included, South Korea has the highest ratio of 156.8 percent, followed by Switzerland. 
South Korea's foreign reserves fell for the first time in four months against the strengthening greenback. According to the Bank of Korea on Monday, the country's foreign exchange reserves came to 425.29 billion U.S. dollars at the end of February. That's $4.68 billion down from the previous month, ending a run of consecutive increases since last November. The drop was attributed to the stronger dollar, reducing the relevant relative dollar value to the reserves held in other currencies. This comes after the U.S. dollar index rose around 2.3 percent in February compared to the previous month. China has set a modest growth rate for this year in the 5 percent range. That's according to Premier Li Keqiang during an annual National People's Congress, where President Xi Jinping's unprecedented third term is supposed to be formalized. China's President Xi Jinping and top officials of the Chinese Communist Party walking into the Great Hall of People in Beijing. The annual National People's Congress kicked off on Sunday, where officials are supposed to declare key policies, President Xi's unprecedented third term, and a leadership shakeup. In his final word report, outgoing Premier Li Keqiang stressed the need for economic recovery, expanding consumption, and creating jobs, while setting a modest growth projection for this year. The main projected targets for development this year are as follows. GDP growth of around 5 percent, around 12 million new urban jobs, a surveyed urban unemployment rate of around 5.5 percent. The growth target marks the lowest figure set by China since 1991 when the goal was 4.5 percent. This comes after the country's growth fell to 3 percent in 2022 against a projection of 5.5 percent. Despite seemingly slowing growth, China is to increase defense spending this year by 7.2 percent to staggering 230 billion U.S. dollars. That aligns with President Xi's thoughts on enhanced military governance. We should fully implement President Xi's thinking on strengthening the military and the military strategy for the new era. The parliament session runs parallel to the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, which together make up the country's biggest annual political event, dubbed the two sessions. They usually last one or two weeks. The biggest item on the agenda is set for Friday. The Congress will vote on President Xi's third term with all eyes on whether he can secure unanimous consent. The next day, Li Chang, the second most powerful person in the party and a close ally of Xi, is due to be confirmed as China's new premier. South Korea's Air Force display team has backed the top prize at a major international air show in Australia. The Air Force on Sunday said its Black Eagles aerobatic team made history by becoming the first winners of the air show's top award, known as Best Overall Display. Striking red and blue across the sky, the team performed 24 highly skilled aerial maneuvers and vowed the, wowed the audience. This is the team's first time participating in Australia show, but it is their second year in a row that the team's elite performance has snagged the top prize at an international air show. Taking off from Australia's Avalon Airport on Wednesday, the team will pass through three countries, including Indonesia and the Philippines, before finally returning home next Monday. K-pop superstars BTS saw success again at the 2023 Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards. The band was named favorite music group for the fourth straight year at the award ceremony in Los Angeles on Saturday local time. The win Miss BTS add to their record number of wins by a music group at the annual Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards with seven trophies so far. Blackpink, Black Eyed Peas, and Imagine Dragons were among seven other nominees in the category. Kids Choice Award winners are decided by an online public vote. Thanks to the continuing popularity of K-pop stars and the rise of K-dramas on various online streaming services, K-entertainment and K-content brought home record high earnings last year. And this could be just the beginning. Lee has more.
from BTS to Blackpink on the K-pop scene, and K-dramas like Extraordinary Eternal Wu and Squid Game. Korea's cultural content has been receiving a ton of love from fans and viewers worldwide. And thanks to this, the Bank of Korea announced Monday that earnings for all Korean entertainment content in 2022 came to 1.72 billion US dollars, up 47.9% from the previous year, setting a new record. On the other hand, South Korea's imports of similar content came to just $467 million, up just 9.7% from 2021. This means South Korea also saw a record trade surplus in the entertainment content sector, coming in at $1.23 billion. The South Korean entertainment industry has seen a steady increase in earnings since 2014, when it recorded an $80 million profit that rose to $245 million in 2015 and $520 million in 2016, thanks to the Korean wave boom in Southeast Asia and China. However, from 2017 to 2020, the industry saw a dip in profits as China boycotted Korean cultural content in response to the deployment of the THAAD system in South Korea. But thanks to the rise of OTT platforms and the power of social media, the K-content industry saw a huge surge in 2021 and 2022. And seeing the profitability, Netflix has continued to increase the number of Korean shows it plans to release on its platform, announcing plans for 34 shows in 2023 after releasing 25 in 2022. Lee Seung-jae, Arirang News. Recurring acute myeloid leukemia is one of the most difficult kinds of leukemia to cure. With no effective treatment until now, hopes of curing the disease are high again with a Korean biocompany's newly developed technology. Lee Eun jin has this story. Leukemia is a cancer of the body's blood-forming tissues, and more than half of the leukemia patients in South Korea suffer from recurring acute myeloid leukemia, or AML. Unfortunately, the number of patients with this disease is growing every year, yet the only available treatment has been anti-cancer drugs that are toxic to the body or bone marrow transplants. And for some, these treatments don't always work. There are more cases where the disease is not completely cured. Patients experience a relapse in under a year, so there really isn't an effective treatment. But now a South Korean bio company has successfully developed a cell therapy method for this disease using immune cells that already exist in the human body. The function of these natural killer cells, also called NK cells, specifically target cancer cells. It has been difficult to mass produce these NK cells, but the bio company has found a way to multiply the production of these cells tenfold. What's unique about their method is that they've moved away from the existing method of separating NK cells from the blood, which results in great losses in the process, only making use of 10% of the blood cells. Instead of separating the NK cells, the bio company separates other cells, reducing the actual NK cells in the blood that are sacrificed. On this foundation, the bio company has conducted four rounds of clinical tests so far in collaboration with the Seoul Asan Medical Center. We've conducted the clinical test on 140 patients. The results so far are very good. Cases of relapse have been reduced to about half, and the rates of survival have doubled. One of the greatest advantages of this NK cell therapy is that it is not as toxic as the existing chemical anti-cancer drugs. Researchers are now aiming to carry out phase two of clinical trials in the first half of this year, and the medical community is expecting this new NK cell therapy to have wider use in treatment beyond acute myeloid leukemia. Yeon Jin, Arirang News. Let's take a look at what's going on in the world now. In Malaysia, rescue efforts are underway amid seasonal flooding over the weekend. At least four people have been killed in flooding in the country's southern state of Johor. The flooding has also displaced some 40,000 people who have been relocated to schools, community centers and relief shelters. Residents have also been cautioned against waterborne diseases. The floods come as a result of record monsoon rains as the region was hit by its highest rainfall for a four-day period since 1991. Floods have also affected other less populated regions, prompting further evacuations. Malaysia's monsoon typically starts in October and ends in March, 
but experts say the wet weather could last until April. Over in Bangladesh, some 12,000 Rohingya refugees have been left homeless after a fire tore through a refugee camp. The fire broke out at the crowded Cox's Bazaar camp on Sunday local time, destroying some 2,000 shelters, including 35 mosques and 21 learning centers. Local hospitals, water centers and testing facilities were also affected. No casualties have been reported and the cause of the blaze is being investigated. Fires are not uncommon in such camps, with the Bangladesh Defense Ministry reporting 222 fires in Rohingya camps in 2021 and 2022. Most Rohingya refugees staying in Bangladesh have escaped Myanmar after a military crackdown against the Rohingya ethnic minority. Meanwhile, at the United Nations headquarters in New York, representatives from over 100 countries agreed to a landmark pact that aims to conserve and revive marine biodiversity and protect the world's oceans. The agreement was made on Saturday after two weeks of talks. Called the High Seas Treaty, the pact aims to turn 30% of international seas into protected areas by 2030. Under the agreement, international waters in these protected areas will have limits on the amount of fishing allowed, shipping lane routes, and deep-sea mining activities. The deal has required over 10 years of negotiations, with talks repeatedly stalled over issues of funding and fishing rights. And finally, renowned architect Rafael Vignoli has died at the age of 78. Known for his unique designs, the New York-based architect was responsible for the creation of over 600 buildings around the world. Among some of his most famous designs is the iconic Zhongdo Tower in Seoul. But some designs have sparked controversy, including London's walkie-talkie building, which initially reflected enough sunlight to melt car parts. The architect was also sued by tenants in a Manhattan residential building over creaks and banging noises. Born in Uruguay, Vignoli moved to the Big Apple in 1978, where he founded Rafael Vignoli Architects, a firm with offices in Palo Alto, London, Manchester, Abu Dhabi and Buenos Aires. Matthew Ashley, Arirang News. Good afternoon. Today marks the third spring term, Gyeongchip, and it will feel more like early to mid-April, with afternoon highs going up 7 to 9 degrees higher than seasonal norms. But of course, it's the very unwelcome dust level that will be high all day in central regions, Jeollabukdo and Gwangju, while an ultra-fine dust advisor could be issued during the day. And dryness in the air continues as well. Iso Gangwondo province is under a dry weather warning with strong wind increasing the risk of fire. Well, yesterday many parts saw the warmest temperatures of the season so far and it could be warmer today, hovering 20 degrees Celsius in southern provinces and the east of Gangwondo province. Mostly sunny skies are blurred with that nasty dust. It's going to be even warmer tomorrow in the capital, topping out at 18 degrees. And the warming trend will continue throughout the week, with spotty rain in the forecast tomorrow at dawn in Gyeonggi-do and Chungcheong-do provinces. That's Korea for you, and here's a look at the international weather conditions.
Thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of the day.